you're building a game in Godot and want that consistent isometric perspective, a great way of implementing that is to use tile map layers. Today we're going to be doing a dive into how tile map layers work for the isometric perspective. We're going to dive into the specific options that you need to work with and a few gotchas to keep in mind as you go through it. This video builds off of the basics that I had covered in the previous video about tile maps in general. So if you haven't seen that yet, I'd recommend going to check that out before you dive into this. Hi, my name is Brian, I'm a software developer, and I've been pouring that love for software development into building accessible game development tutorials so that you can build the game that you want. Let's get started. So what is ISOM? to is 2.5D, where you're looking at a grid at a 45 degree angle from up top, but all of the lines are going straight, so there's no perspective shift. You've seen this in the original Diablo games, uh, the original StarCraft 1, Age of Empires, uh, and even the original Fallout game. Uh, for a really deep dive on this, I'd really strongly recommend watching Adam C. Eunice's video on this. They do an excellent, excellent job discussing the, the math behind all of it. We'll cover a really basic amount of it here, but Adam's video is fantastic. Strongly recommend checking that out. Now, isometric tiles themselves are typically in this two by one ratio. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be working with tiles that are 64 pixels wide and 32 pixels tall. I've created some here as an example, so you can work with them. They're just numbered tiles one through eight. And this numbering is gonna be useful in a, in a little bit to give us a little bit of perspective. So in order to work with tiles, we need to create a tile map layer. I'm just coming over into my scene tree here. I have created a new node 2D scene. I've just called it isometric tiles. And I'm going to hit control A on Windows or command A on Mac. I'm gonna search for tile map layer here. Remember that we don't wanna use tile maps. We wanna use tile map layers. Tile maps are gonna be going away at some point and Godot offers a conversion utility to automatically convert any tile maps that you have into tile map layers. Remember from here that we don't have a tile set yet, so we need to create that. And this is where we start deviating from where we had done with square tiles. We first need to change our tile shape. So the default here is square. Today we're working with isometric. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna define our tile size. So it's 64 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall. Next, we can bring in our tile set. So we're gonna hop over into our tile set tab. If you don't see this, make sure that your tile map layer is selected. Go into our tile sources, hit our plus sign, add an atlas, and we're going to bring in our isometric tiles.png. Now the entire space of our atlas has tiles in it. We can automatically have it, have it automatically create our tiles. So we click on that. If we look at our base tiles here, we can see that all eight of them are selected. And just by hovering over each one, you can see a nice yellow box covering all of them. It's been able to figure that out just fine. As a quick test, we can hop over into our scene. If we zoom in, you're just gonna take, click on our tile map tab here down below, select the number one, and I can easily paint this. And we're already off to the races. Everything is looking pretty good so far. Now, because we've selected a tile shape that's not square, we actually have two different options to work with here that we didn't have before. We have our tile layout and we have our tile offset axis. Now together, these two options help define what the grid layout actually is. What do each of the coordinates mean and how do they relate to one another? So if I'm painting a tile on the tile map here, in the bottom left corner of, of the editor, we can see that this particular tile is positioned at negative one, negative one. And if I move over, this is at zero one, move over again, this is one negative one, two negative one, and so on and so forth. This tile layout and the tile offset excess drive both of those. Now it's a little bit hard to visualize each of these just by looking over the options. So what I instead did is I created some code that fills out a four by four grid of these, and then we can move between these options and we can see what they look like. Now the tile layout of stacked follows this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, kind of staggered off to the side here. This one varies based on whether or not we have horizontal offset or vertical offset set. And so if I change this, you can see that one, two, three, four gets put a little bit stacked closer to one another, and then everything starts moving a little bit further down. Stacked offset essentially is doing the same thing. So we can see that 
the bottom row for stacked is kind of pushed off to the right hand side. Stacked offset is going to the left hand side. Now we can see the same thing for stacked offset for a vertical offset in comparison. So stacked, we went down and to the right. Stacked offset, we're now going up and to the right. Now stairs down has this slow moving pattern to the side. So the bottom is always staying consistent, but we have this kind of stairs approach here. Stairs down, similar process where we're going in a straight line for one, two, three, four, moving on to the next line, so on and so forth. Horizontal and vertical offset don't do anything for any of these other values. It's just for the stacked values. Then finally, we've got diamond right, which is going up and to the right. And then we have diamond down, which is going to the right and down. Now, which of these tile layouts you pick is up to you. However, you do need to be aware that when you select this, you don't want to change it after you've started painting. Because as you see, we've been able to change these and things go every which way. So if you want some consistency in how things look, set it once, leave it as is. Now the tile layout and the offset axis are really the main differences between this and square style tile shapes. In terms of interacting with your tile sets and your tile maps, it's all exactly the same. We still have all of the same paint functionality. I can still select one particular tile. I can apply it across. Can still select a bunch of these and I can randomize them. That's all okay. All of this functionality still exists. All still available to us just as it will be for every other style of tile shape. The main difference here is your tile layout and your offset axis. One other thing to note with this is that if you're just working with 2D tiles as we're working with here, everything's going to work straight out of the box. You don't need to make any changes. However, this does break down a little bit if you're working with 3D tiles. So what do I mean by that? So what we're going to do is we're going to hop into our tile set. We're going to create a new atlas and we're going to bring in our 3D isometric tiles that I previously created. I'm not going to automatically include these because the size of each texture is not actually 64 by 32 as it looks. This is actually 64 by 48. And so if I click on each one of these, this looks fine, except we can see that there's this light diamond outline here, and it doesn't align with the top. So we need to adjust this first. So if we hop over into our select, I'm going to select both of these because their offsets are the same. And we won't need to adjust our texture origin. And so we're applying a negative Y value, and we can just slowly increment this up until it looks right. And so in this case, it was negative eight. So if we try painting with these now, we'll get closer, but it's not going to look quite right. If I paint over across these, it looks a little weird. It kind of looks like they don't know what order they're supposed to be built in. And that's exactly what's going on. Now, if we're working with 3D tiles like this, what we need to do is we need to enable Y sort. And this exists in our canvas item under Y sort enabled. If we check this off, it starts using the Y coordinates of our particular tiles in order to help order them. And this is going to get the ones that are kind of in between here laid out correctly. This also lets us use scenes, both as scene collections, as tile sets, but it also lets us work with scenes that are just floating independent of it as direct children to our tile map layer. It is worth noting that if you're, you are going to be doing that, they do need to be direct children of your tile map layer. I have another video that you can take a look at to help you along with that. And that's it for today's video. If you've followed the previous video and you followed this one, you're all set to be able to work with isometric tile maps. Hopefully this has been useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And if you like this video, you'll be interested in my next video, which is covering how to interact with tile maps using code. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.